so well and to just compose cut well, out everything we said yeah, right now it's that's not gonna be this <laughs> Viennese sound. What is <laughs> Viennese sound? In the strings, yes, in the winds. Yes. But when you play it, the double bass, the vibrations, everything, and, and the sound waves that are just circling around you, it's really amazing. It's like, it's like a deep organ. Yes, absolutely. So yeah. I usually play a question based on your question. But Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in. Today, I have the huge pleasure of talking to Christoph Wimmer. For those of you who don't know him, he's a principal bass in the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra and professor at the University for Music and Performing Arts in Vienna. The last time I talked to Jeff Bredetich, one of the biggest innovators of the bass scene, especially when it comes to the double bass as a solo instrument. And today we want to do something different. We want to talk about tradition. And we want to talk about especially the Viennese tradition, since we are here in Vienna, I'm from Vienna, you're playing in the most prestigious Vienna, a Viennese orchestra, and well, and about other things as well. So first of all, really thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Thank you very much that I can be with you today. So the first thing is obviously Viennese sound. What is <laughs> Viennese sound? In the strings, yes, in the winds? Yes. Like, do if you hear the word, what comes to your mind? That's a really difficult entrance because you know, as you say, this uh, this term Viennese sound, it's just everywhere in the heads, but uh, it's really difficult to describe in one or two sentences. It's just we have time, don't worry. We have time, yeah. <laughs> so maybe it's it's a good thing that these magic big things are not are really to describe just easily. It's something uh, you have to experience, probably. Yeah, come to the concert. <laughs> <laughs> yes, come to Vienna and listen for yourself. It's the best way. Because, I mean, just, just an easy um, comparison. If you would try to explain the sound of a violin compared to the sound of a trumpet to somebody who has not yet ever heard an instrument, you could only use attributes, something you could say it sounds sweet it sounds dark it sounds metallic but you never can really describe a sound yes. so this is the point where i always uh, i'm lacking a little bit of words but i also think um, viennese sound is only one part of the whole tradition so i think uh, the term was first created in the 60s or so mm -hmm. um, and it just refers to special characteristics of uh, orchestras in vienna that throughout history over the last hundred years or whatever, um, Viennese orchestras um, tried to stay with special, I say, things now, whereas other orchestras um, developed into another direction. So there's this, <laughs> this funny saying, if, you, if the world ends, just go to Vienna, everything there happens many years later. <laughs> yes, no, yes, but for example, uh, we have special instruments that are only used in Vienna. So that's more uh, in the winds and brass section. So Viennese oboe, yes. for example, um, is a is an instrument that is played in a completely different way. It and sounds only completely in, different in Vienna, also like Salzburg brass, or is it just? I'm not sure, but that's uh, it's used really in our orchestra. We only have Viennese oboes, um, and that's definitely a Viennese thing. To be honest, I think in other Austrian orchestras it may be mixed. I'm mm. not sure. Um, we have, of course, the timpani. They have um, winches you um, uh, change by hand. You are adjusting by hand instead oh, of feet. Okay. And um, they use goatskin. And those timpanis, they are sounding so incredibly. This is a full, rich sound. We played this week, we played Die Frauen Schatten by yeah. Richard Strauss. And in the third act, in the end, there is there are some parts where it's a really melody more or less in the timpanis and this sound it's just really a singing instrument it's it's amazing singing timpani. It, it, it's really it's not wow. sometimes you think timpani is boom 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 yeah no no really not then of course very characteristic the viennese horn yes so it's way more difficult to play obviously also i'm not a horn player over, right? <laughs> yes than the french horn because uh, officially i'm not sure if i find the right english words now but officially um, you would play everything, I think, a fifth higher. So everything you play would be uh, much higher because on the French horn you can choose between two settings, I yes. think with a thumb or something. Yes. And you cannot do this on the Viennese horn. 
but the sound then is uh, as well clearly also completely different. Yes, I mean that's especially if if for me in in the louder brass parts yes, you yes. can hear that that's yes. a very specific yes. sound and that's something very yes. nice to keep. I was also talking to a pr trumpet player two days ago and said, well. Can you just tell me what exactly? Because I knew you would be asking everything. <laughs> and he said, yeah, it's sound. Yeah, with vibrato, usually uh, our brass doesn't use any vibrato. But he says, yeah, this is not something really special for here. But uh, especially the the beginning, the articulation yeah. of each note. And he says it's very difficult for trumpet players who are studying here to get jobs in other regions of the world because uh, there this would sound like too... A little bit too brutal, too uh, straight, and everything. Uh, so, um, but that's often the case. Like I yeah. see, it, like now that I'm also teaching and also work with a lot of bassists over the mm -hmm. last few years, the traditions are so incredibly different yes. in, in different parts yes. of the world. Just with the bass, yeah. and we have yeah. no <laughs> special. I mean, there are Viennese basses, but they're still played the same way um, than the other basses. Exactly. It's not like you need to use different yeah. fingerings or yeah. something. Um, but the traditions and the, the styles and the sounds people want are so different. And I personally really like that. I appreciate that because yes. that makes it interesting. I mean, God imagine if everyone played the same way. I completely, I'm completely with you. And that's why I always think that these rankings about the best orchestra yeah, that makes no sense. are not really relevant. Because uh, just to, to talk about the cliches. So when yeah. I studied, it always said, okay, the Viennese Philharmonic, they have this rich beautiful string sound the characteristic um, uh, winds and brass um, and they are a little bit what we call in Austria schlampig which I don't know what's the real translation it's not lazy but it's not really correct uh, not really precise yes a little bit unprecise so this is what was said and the Berlin Philharmonic that they are really like a machine where everything is working and everything so this was yeah. the stereotypes um, that were used at this time and then when I entered the orchestra in 2003 I took some recordings and it was really interesting because then for example I heard um, pictures of an exhibition mm -hmm. and at the end the uh, house uh, this Große Tor von Kiev and when you have the trumpet and, and you heard yeah. trumpet with full vibrato I yeah. thinking, something I didn't recognize at the first moment what it is but that's even the vibrato makes yeah. a really big difference. Yes. And yeah, it's nice. I mean, also with the basses. I mean, let, let's first talk about the string sound. Also. Yes. I think that is because there are many theories like yes. what is the Viennese yeah. string sound. And, and, and I do really hear it. I, I personally mm -hmm. love the string sound mm -hmm. in, in Vienna, especially in the Vienna Philharmonic. Mm -hmm. um, and the theory of some people is that it comes back to the time also in Berlin when Karajan worked with the orchestra since he nowadays, I don't know if most people know that, but normally a conductor comes, he has like two, three days maximum of rehearsals. That's it. Then come the concerts. Mm -hmm. And he sometimes had weeks where he only worked with the string yes. players on every little detail. And, mm -hmm. and the kind of sound, like mm -hmm. the intensity mm -hmm. of the sound that he got out in the end was unique, was, was the first yes. time this ever happened. Yes. And those two orchestras are the ones where he stayed the, the longest time. And those two have this especially unique string sound i think mm -hmm. and how much do you think is, is from that how much is from the tradition that existed before or came after mm -hmm. well in vienna i think um lots of the historic viennese sound in the strings or let it let it put in let's put it in another way you correctly said before with the strings it's not so much the instrument mm. we have the viennese double bass and i'm personally i'm the biggest fan of viennese double bass just to describe maybe for some yes the differences absolutely um they differ in shape they do not have the violin form they come from the gumbo form they have a flat back um they do not have the round shaped back uh, they have a completely different um what we call wirbel custom you you just tuners uh, yeah no, yeah but the form of yeah yeah the, 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 uh, form the is complete form yeah, is different yeah, yeah, yeah. and of course uh, the tradition is um, you know the, I mean I do not need to tell you but maybe it's Absolutely. interesting for some who don't know uh, I think the most dense time for concerts composed for the double bass was between 1760 and 1780 in Vienna I think exactly. it was almost between 20 and 30. Concerts composed oh, for the double I, bass. I heard it was 48. Or 48? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I looked it up at in the fourth. I mean, just Sperger wrote 18. Yeah, but he, he, did, <laughs> he didn't yes, live in Vienna. He didn't though. write 
all of them in Vienna probably. Yeah, a lot in, in Ludwigslust. So, but Germany. it was really yeah. within a period of 25 years, it was just so much. And yes. uh, those were exclusively composed for the Viennese double bass in a five string version with the Viennese tuning. So it was in uh, F or F sharp, A, D, F sharp, A. Depending, depending on the depending key. on what you a, needed yeah. exactly. So in D major, you basically yes. had a gigantic D major yes. chord. In E flat major and E flat yes. and so on. And for example, for the soli in the Haydn symphonies, you could just tune the F sharp to an F because they are usually in the minor yeah. key. And so uh, these double basses really have an amazing history. And I have I'm so lucky to have um, two Viennese double basses on my uh, and privately. And yeah, I'm owing owning <laughs> and nice. this is just they are so beautiful it's yeah. ah, they look it's the also best. gorgeous it's i have to say for me. for me yes. uh, for solo i play an old yeah. italian one but for chamber music i've now yeah. for a few years been playing viennese basses now currently I have two different that i'm changing in yeah. between and it's i think I they mean, have a very good articulation yes but a very profound sound yeah they have this this yeah. mixture i mean okay this yeah. is a bit uh nerdy for for non basses i'm sorry but hey, it might but be we are nerdy. sorry <laughs> <laughs> we're basses <also. laughs> but to me this this the italian basses i mean for solo it's a different thing but yes. when it comes to like bass as a bass function instrument yes. in the orchestra i love them they have this richness but when i play a trout quintet for mm -hmm. example and that's <laughs> let's, let's be real in chamber music that's <laughs> what you do most of the time um The, what the Viennese basses have, they have this richness too, the old ones, but they also have this certain clearness, yes. this certain yes. um, uh, body. Really clear and articulation. Yes. Exactly. And, yes. and, and you, I, I remember when I, the first time I played on an old Viennese bass in chamber music, it was Schubert Octet. And I felt like, oh my God, this is, this mm. is how this yes. is meant to be played. And the trout was also written and composed for a Viennese tuning. So. Yeah, oh, in Viennese tuning. <laughs> that, that I should do. That I didn't do yet. That, that would yeah, be interesting. Yeah, you should try. I, I also haven't tried, but I think it would be worth... Although especially, I think, in the in the concertos, in the classical concertos, mm -hmm. like Van Hal or Dittersdorf or, or Sperger concertos, there, the Viennese tuning, I think... I, I never performed like that, but I don't perform publicly classical concertos for that exact reason. Like, it's one thing. Really? We, we are basically, we're playing only transcriptions. Like so we'll we, never hear you play digital stuff? Wait, wait, wait <laughs> I'm, I'm, com I'm coming to that. Uh, so the, the problem I have is basically we're playing transcriptions, right? Like, we, mm -hmm. we're leaving out yes. parts even in the concertos. Yes. We have to change so many notes, so many double stops we leave out because it just doesn't work in the normal mm -hmm. fourth tuning. And if I play transcriptions, then I would rather play, you know, some <laughs> Beethoven <laughs> or Mozart. Um, no transcriptions of Dieter stuff. <laughs> yeah, so, sorry about that. But in the Viennese tuning, if, yeah. if basically since they're really laid out perfectly, like it's yes. all harmonics and, yes. and I imagine this if you play it in a, in a bass that's really used to Viennese tuning, not just one that you quickly put on the strings, this must be such a resonance bomb. Yes. This must sound yes. so like this must be such a vibration on stage with the instrument. That would be yes. interesting. And that is something I will definitely yes. do one day. Because yes. then it makes sense. Absolutely. If then it's also no transcription anymore. Yeah. And, and yeah, then if I transcribe, I mean, yeah. Beethoven sonatas are, are nice. Yeah. <laughs> But maybe let's come back to what you asked before. Yes. So back in 1760, we yes. had this really big tradition about the Viennese double bass and the, all the compositions compositions back then um, but I think the special sound of the strings in Vienna um, has its roots in the very uh, special system of education because um, you know of course everybody of the bass players knows Simandl yeah for example and he was a member of the Vienna Philharmonic And uh, for a very long time, well, let's put it the other way around, uh, the Vienna Philharmonic was founded in 1842. And back then, in Vienna, you couldn't even really study double bass. It was just within the uh, cello lessons that you could also, obviously... It's like bassoon doing the contrabassoon yeah. as well and the cellist. Doing the <laughs> yes, <double> more or <laughs> less, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so the center of double bass playing back then for Vienna was actually more bohemian and, and more... Um, Czech. Moravia, how do you say? Yeah, in English. Mo yeah, Moravia, Moravia, yeah. Moravia, yes. I think. Uh -huh. Yes, so people came from there. Um, so the big school, Wenzel House and everything, this was an influence from, from uh, this area. So, but then there was a tradition that um, 
kept almost without uh, interruptions from C metal until 1972 mm-hmm. with Otto Rühm. It ended that always a principal bass player or a bass player of the Vienna Philharmonic was teaching at the university or back then it was called academy at the same time. So with C metal it was very special. He played in Vienna. He also played in Bayreuth. He was working with Wagner and everything. So he was really a man of of experience yes. in playing himself. And he could um, pass this on to his uh, students for a long time. And then one of his students got a teacher again when he was retired. And so this system worked until the 70s. So when I um, started in the orchestra... A quick question was even now what we know as Viennese uh, yes. technique, Ludwig Streicher, was he also part of that? Uh, yes, that's very interesting. So of course, Ludwig Streicher was a member of the Vienna Philharmonic, but then he left the orchestra and was teaching. So of course... He, it's a direct line, but officially, just for the records, he was not, I think he was not teaching at the same time while he was in the orchestra. So, of course, he, but he gave also everything. changed the, the school. The, like he made he's a new probably board, right? the most important guy. Maybe for me, even how we play today, more, uh, even more important than Seemandl. Sorry. He's kind <laughs> of, wanna, you, you could say he yeah. updated it, kind of. Like Seemandl Ab- yeah. founded it yeah. and, and, and like it's necessary yes. of tradition. Yes. You cannot just do the same thing yes. for hundreds of years. You need to keep some Absolutely. parts, update some parts. As you say, so the roots are back in um, Seemandl and Wenzelhaus and everything and, Bottis, uh, and Streicher updated it. And that's also something that's getting updated even today, but I think his profound basics are still used and taught Mostly, today. Yeah, yeah. yeah, And I was talking to uh, the first principal bass player yesterday, the Vienna Philharmonic, and because he studied with Streicher, he always also says it was just absolutely fabulous how in in when teaching he always showed it with big movements what he did with his fingers. The whole uh, that's also something I like very much about Streicher that fine-tuning in yeah. here so when teaching he was showing it like this but when playing it was always very very focused small you couldn't even see what he did it was just really ah, amazing oh, that's fantastic yes yeah that's that's what i that's actually <laughs> when i talk to jeff bradisich his main concept is minimal effort maximum result that's very good and when playing it's the biggest truth ever yes I mean, in, in orchestra, I feel, okay, I, I also do more because mm-hmm. it's more about the gesture that you do all together, especially yes. if you're leading. Um, but when, especially in solo, like any unnecessary movement, don't do it. It's going to just be extra energy and extra nerves <laughs> being lost. Just yeah. minimal effort, yeah. maximum result. It's yes. interesting to see that yes. also in, in him. And, and then you teach, of course. Yeah, that's why show. I like this bow hold so much because it's just like you're saying hello it's to very somebody. Natural. They take the bow. And that's it. That's it. <laughs> so that's no difficult best, yeah. explanations. It's just as simple as it can be. I, I like that too. I mean, I, I have to say for all the, the bases that are interested and that maybe don't know, I grew up in the in Vienna, so also in the Viennese yes. tradition. I learned playing with the, mm-hmm. the Ludwig Streicher bow mm-hmm. grip. I did change it after some time because I think it fits perfectly for the Viennese mm-hmm. bases who that have a have a rather bright sound, yes. a very direct sound. Yes. And I want to talk about that in the context of the orchestra in a moment. But I then when I started playing on the old Italian bass, I saw, okay, here it's it's not working so so ideally. It just mm-hmm. didn't, it just was too round, too nice. Okay. It didn't have that, mm-hmm. you know, it lost mm-hmm. that. And I had the space that I otherwise loved and it was like, okay, am I going to, you know, change bass now or am I going to change the ball grip? And the cheaper thing oh, wow. to do. So you changed your <laughs> bow due to an instrument? Yes. Okay. Because on that, I mean, if I played mostly on a Viennese bass now, I would probably play with the Viennese. Okay. I mean, I can still do that. Sometimes actually when I do chamber music on the Viennese basses, I actually change the bow grip while playing. It's, okay. it's not so dramatic. So one I, phrase like this, one phrase like this. <laughs> you could change within a piece. <laughs> no, actually, I, I, I sometimes even do that. Okay. It's, it's not the big thing. Mm-hmm. That I, I have the feeling much more important is... How, how flexible the fingers are, that everything is relaxed, that everything can move when you want it mm-hmm. to move, mm-hmm. that you can transport the weight and yeah. so on. But I, I don't need to tell you those okay. things. But in the end, where you put the fingers, it makes a difference for the sound, mm-hmm. mainly. And of course, if you, if, you, if, if you position them not in an ideal way, you can have weird shapes in your arm mm-hmm. or elbow or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but if a bow grip works well for you and you don't totally... Um, screwed up then 
I have the feeling you can you can play with many different okay. bow grips and the one thing that you cannot change though is different sound color that they mm -hmm. bring mm -hmm. and that's something I, I find so fascinating with the orchestras in Germany for example in almost all orchestras everyone plays the five string basses yes. yes. and in Vienna what I personally really really like is you mix between four string and five yes. string um, first of all for the for the non bassists what is the difference why do we need five strings well we double the cellos in the octave which means we, we basically often play the same thing just one octave lower but the cello goes all the way down to the C and the fourth string bass only to the E so you have the fifth string to go to the C sometimes to the low B even depending on, on what you prefer even in Frauen Schatten to the B flat <laughs> to the B flat yes. really yes. wow <laughs> it's just for two or three spots but how does it sound probably like Yes, I actually, <laughs> this week I tried <laughs> I tried to record this with an iPhone. Yeah. Just this part where you do, and it was like you said, the iPhone was thinking like, are you crazy? What should I do with this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but when but you... But if the right harmony comes on top yeah, of that yeah. note, then, then it's yeah. insane. But when you play it, the double bass, the vibrations, everything, and, and the sound waves that are just circling around you, it's really amazing. It's like... It's like a deep organ. It's yes, such good. absolutely. So yeah. I usually play four string bass, but for Frauen Schatten, because there are some areas where just one bass is playing, I use the five string bass. Nice. And this, uh, it's just, ah, this is perfect. But as you said, uh, four string basses also have, I think, a uh, better articulation and they are usually, they sound better in the thumb positions. Yes. So it makes I mean, sense for us. I mean, it's less pressure on the yeah. bridge. So yeah. more, more overtones yeah. also. They, I think they transport better. I think with a four string bass it's one thing like being loud mm -hmm. and it's another thing having a sound that can be really heard yes. when other instruments are playing as well and i think that's something four string basses have much more yes. and that's i don't know how, how i talk to different people in your orchestra <laughs> about this topic okay. but what i really like but i'm a bassist but still i love that in the vienna philharmonic orchestra the bass sound is very present mm -hmm. like compared mm -hmm. to other orchestras mm -hmm. You could say almost a bit on the dominant side. <laughs> some people yes. like it, some don't. I, yeah. I absolutely love yeah. it. I mean, and yeah. I think that is a big part also of mm. the string sound. If this low area is so, then, yes. then it makes everything richer. But yeah. Yeah. but talking about about tradition, uh, it's when I started uh, in the principal position, I started in the tutti. Uh, in two thousand three, and as a principal in two thousand and six, I think. Ah, okay, okay, and. We, uh, we had uh, many discussions about about the l sound level of the double basses yeah. and is it too loud? No, it's not too loud. Or whatever. It's, it's never it's too loud. Really, yeah, it's really, <laughs> yeah, it's something completely different in opera and in symphonic repertoire, yes. of course. But yeah, when I entered the orchestra, I played with still, or let's say like this, uh, there was a big generation change in the late 90s and 2000s. So the orchestra was enlarged in the late 70s and all those uh, guys retired back then mm. so um i still had the pleasure to meet many of the old <laughs> old guys yes. before uh, the group almost uh, exchanged yeah well, now there's so many uh, young people yeah more than the half is now no i think even eight or nine of the 13 may have changed or Eight at least, yes. Within the last few years. So, um, for example, many of you may know him um, uh, was uh, Gürtler. He was a very big bass player. Wolfgang Gürtler, Wolfgang Gürtler, not Gürtler. 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 Yes. Visually a bit yes. similar body. He looked like Brahms. <laughs> very white beard. Yes. And, and he still was studying with uh, Rühm and everything. And he was... All those guys, they still... Uh, had lessons with uh, Rühm where he said where this era ended or Streicher ah, yes and, wh and when there were uh, auditions he always said yes the young people they are really I mean they are technical they are so great but fine but please don't forget the sound for me he was saying this bef shortly before he retired he said yeah. everybody is playing so well but the sound the big orchestra sound the double bass so this was really something that they took a very important lesson. So, and there we are again um, at this part where I said, yeah, maybe not everything was so correct and perfectly played, but they always had this good feeling for for the sound. 
and I mean that's so much more important who in a concert cares about if it's completely perfect yeah. or like if you could choose like the cleanest per most yeah. perfect performance or a performance where people really go all even out even Richard Strauss himself yeah. said it because you know in, in Vienna this is just the most amazing spot because you had Richard Strauss here as a director of the opera he was conducting and I was still did Mahler also yes I was yeah of course it was, it's, it's this longer, would be a, a, an own podca a podcast of in its own just <laughs> the whole history here but I played with people whose fathers were still people playing with Richard Strauss for wow. example so it's you think Richard Strauss oh my god that's back then it was almost history but it's really close It's not that when far you're away. Here. It's yeah. not that far away. And now it's 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 standard yeah. repertoire. That's maybe yes. why it feels like it. But it's and there's also a YouTube recording where Richard Strauss is conducting. Do you know it? He has one hand within his trousers and it's just like Solomon. <laughs> he was not the most emotional guy. He was just. But his like music this. is so ridiculously emotional. Yes. And then emotional. obviously the story says a flute player said. Uh, Mr. Strauss, this is just, uh, it's impossible to play because you have all this yeah. in, the, in Salome and Electra and everything. It's just impossible to play. And obviously he said, don't don't care for the single notes. It's more the effect and the line and everything is rich. So, yes, it's official. <laughs> Even Richard Strauss himself said just the expression and the expressive, um, yeah, is, is much more important than every single note. I mean, especially when we go forward from Strauss like yes. if you look at the contemporary stuff yeah. in I mean so many pieces it's completely unplayable <laughs> it, but it's, it's supposed to be it's about the gesture okay. and I mean even in, in classic it's maybe what's unplayable for you <laughs> ooh, ooh. There, there are quite a few <laughs> things but but that's a secret I, I just don't play those things you know I'll tell you later <laughs> no but that, that's the whole idea I mean for me okay, I'm, 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 my, my, my biggest well privilege also is since i i mostly do the projects i want to do um i only choose things that i can do <laughs> i don't have mm, to do the rest that's a different concept than playing in an orchestra yes <laughs> yeah there you have to you get the program you have to play it and then that's it but you would have a chance with the vienna philharmonic because maybe also not all of you know uh the orchestra is managed by orchestra members yes so the whole that board is are, so cool. is a violinist a double bass player so if you get CEO of the Vienna Philharmonic, you can choose what, what <laughs> program. <laughs> so that that's another option. Either I continue with like okay, solo or and chamber music, CEO. or I get CEO <laughs> in Vienna. <laughs> it's I'm sure it's easy to yeah, get there. It, yeah. That's something very interesting, anyways, mm -hmm. to talk to you about it. Vienna Philharmonic, Vienna State Opera. That's something people often mm -hmm. don't know. You don't audition for Vienna Philharmonic. You mm -hmm. audition for the Vienna State Opera. Exactly. Yes. And then after some years. You might be invited to join the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra, which is like a, a what is it official? Like a, a private club of musicians, kind of, <laughs> with a, the biggest it's a brand society. name. It's a society. It's a society. Since I think 1906 or seven, yes. So the that is led by musicians of the orchestra themselves, exactly. not by the normal uh, like management, no, no, but by the orchestra no. members. There are some people who are not musicians, like. Um, Uh, like I don't know the English terms now. Sorry, like Buchhaltung, um, like bookkeeping. Uh, yeah. yeah, of course the the operational office. Yes. Um, yes. Then Orchesterwarte people, people preparing stage, everything, um, archives or um, how do you, yeah, yeah archives. Yeah. Archives. Yeah. So of course these are people not playing, but the but real the operational program. program and everything planning is everything done by members. Yes. That is very unique. Yeah. And so, but the, 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 it's also two different things. Like you have the state opera where you yes. you audition for, and that is also um, financed, co-financed by by the state of Austria. Or? Yes, it's a Bundestheater. Yeah, their Volksoper, uh, Burgtheater, state opera. It's more and, than one. And and there year. you have like a certain amount of of services you do every month, mm -hmm. and in addition to that, you do philharmonic and. Mm -hmm. Like how does how does it work getting into that? Mm -hmm. like how, how does how how do you get started? It's maybe <laughs> we're drifting around a lot today. But that's okay. I <laughs> but, think, yeah. So <laughs> the beginning of the Vienna Philharmonic was actually very interesting because uh, before 1842 there was of course the Wiener Hofoper, mm -hmm. the opera house of the monarchy, <laughs> Hofoper, and back then um, uh, they said let's play 
best pieces with the best musicians in the best possible way. And they started concerts. So uh, already back in 1842, the members of the Vienna Philharmonic were recruited among the Hofopern Orchestra. Ah, so, okay. Um, and since then it's, it's um, how do you say, a joint venture or uh, it's, it's really completely connected. Um, what's also very special about Vienna Philharmonic is that we do not have a principal conductor. So there is has never, I mean, back then in the 19th century, there have been conductors like Richter who did a lot of concerts, Karajan many, many, many also, concerts. Right? Yeah, Karajan also, but Richter did just much more, uh, many more Helmesberger. So they had big influence. But uh, now over the last 60, 70, 80 years, there are always conductors invited. So there's not a single conductor who is doing lots more than all the other and conductors. And in the state opera there is? In the state opera, usually when I started, um, we had Johan Hollander with Seiji Ozawa. Mm -hmm. um, now we had Philip Jordan. Um, we had Most. And right now we do not have one, <laughs> but that's another story. So uh, one says uh, the Vienna Philharmonic as an in institution itself to have such a clear vision of sound and tradition and articulation and how to play things that uh, one wouldn't uh, pass the responsibility for this to, to one outside guy. Sorry to say it like this, <laughs> but yeah, I, I hope you understand what I mean. So yeah, of course. the orchestra has such a rich history and is working with this history itself and deciding itself or yeah. What and it's, and, and the members of the Philharmonic mm -hmm. are made out of the members from the state opera yes. or also other yes. Viennese orchestras? No. Just so the... you, as you said, you do the audition to the Vienna uh, state opera. And then after three years and after you pass the trial period, you can apply for uh, being taken as a member into the society. This is, but and do you... people sometimes not do that for years or is it like the more the standard thing? So uh, you, you can the, apply. Nowadays you know? it's, it's, I have never seen that somebody doesn't do it. <laughs> um, in the 70s and 60s, it was difficult because uh, there were the opera wanted to have more musicians, so there were more musicians. But the Philharmonic Orchestra <laughs> didn't want to have more because they they would have had to uh, to uh, uh, no, how do you say to share the money with more guys. <laughs> so <laughs> sometimes back then, yes. uh, some colleague told me he had to wait for eight years until he was accepted into oh. which was of course really unfair yeah but today it's after three years you can apply and yeah but you are playing in the vienna philharmonic as well for uh, at the first day when you start it's called arbeitskreis you are not officially a member but you're playing state over and philharmonic of course you get paid the same as the others or you get only paid the same once you're a member. <laughs> that's none of your business <laughs> <laughs> um and what might be interesting here is so of course one might be interested how uh, how do you decide who is playing where yeah so we have some sort of system with points <laughs> it's it's really really crazy and the percentage like you play more opera more philharmonic yeah that's that's point system and it's okay. really crazy so we have uh, in former times we had a really big book it was like this and like this and there was every service every rehearsal every concert was in there written. yeah and we get one point for every 15 minutes we play okay and then after the seventh minute you get a point but not before the seventh and we change it now so after the first minute you get the point <laughs> <laughs> so um but, oh, but that makes you sense. get a point yeah. for uh for rehearsals in the opera for uh performances in the opera you get re uh, points for uh, concerts in vienna with the vienna philharmonic for long tours as on short tours so uh, lots of different points yes yes and um, you, you don't count per service but per 15 yeah. uh, that makes so much sense yeah because some operas yeah, are so yeah. long <laughs> but this is different from every section to every section violins ah. have are having a completely different system every section decides on their own or winds they just say services i think ah, so one service okay is service, yes. so this is the, this is the way the yeah. bass players decide but yes so, no. and so you have even within the state opera you have not just within the Philharmonic, but also within the state, where you have so many individual ways of... Yes, but this is just for the groups to... Every group, in a democratic way, chooses how they want to handle this. But wow. that's the way when, when you are very high in the points in the opera, yeah. then 
in the next months you will play more in the Vienna Philharmonic, for example. Or when you do the long Asia tour, we are going on tour next week for three weeks. Mm -hmm. You get a certain amount of points. So the next long tour probably then somebody else. Of course, you can change and everything. But this is the way how you try to do fair conditions for everyone. And you can also negotiate like within a yes. group if, if you, for example, have a gig at some point and you have... Or yeah, or family. <laughs> or family. <laughs> family. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they also... Yeah, when you get a baby and you don't want to be away for three weeks, then you could ask a colleague, say, could you do this now? And I'll uh, do I the next one or... Right. yeah. Ah, so you're you're very so it's very important. You it's get along very with your sophisticated colleagues system. very well. <laughs> yeah, if, it's, you're very. This dependent is always very good because you're spending more time with the colleagues than with your family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's something people should also know. Like the amount of work, mm -hmm. like the amount of either services. Work. Of Don't say work. work. Ah. That was the first thing I said to my wife when I met her. I said, "No, music is not work." And she took me by the word. And then after two years, she said, work. "But you're not working. You're just <laughs> making music." <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> yeah, so the amount of but sorry, music that's, making. That's another video. story. I'm sorry, but I have to make it official and tell yeah. her now. Then she's t asked me, and and what what do you have to do to become a, a conductor? And I said, when you were not good enough for an instrument. But but I was obviously saying it's very seriously, and and she she was believing it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah, even then she told one of her colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it goes even further like that you cannot play an instrument anymore okay you conduct you cannot even conduct anymore okay you compose <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay i didn't know this one <laughs> it's not not true it's so so difficult to conduct so well and to just compose cut well, out everything we said right yeah, now it's that's not gonna be this is gonna <laughs> <laughs> no but it, it, it that's something but what i wanted to to ask so mm -hmm. uh, compared to let's say other symphony mm -hmm. orchestras mm -hmm. in, in the german-speaking area the amount of not work, but making music. <laughs> making music, you get as part yeah. of the Philharmonic and State Opera, yes. both put together, mm -hmm. is quite a bit more than in other orchestras. Probably yes. <laughs> so, like, I mean, I when we talk mm -hmm. about services, mm -hmm. since that's what most most people, like in other <laughs> orchestras, use. Um, often you have like maybe 25, 28 services per month. If you're tutti, if mm -hmm. you're principal bass, often you have only half of that. Mm -hmm. um, in if you combine like is there a certain amount of, of of shifts you have to do in the opera and then in addition comes the philharmonic or both cut, uh, counted together mm -hmm. I, I heard often it's like 40 sometimes 50 you know um so of course in the opera we are employed and so there is our clear there's a collective vertrag i don't know what it's called there's in english and there are contract. official limits yeah. what you have to play but it's allowed to play you may not play more and ah, you may not play more yeah for example i think uh, it doesn't count for rehearsals, but I think it's for a principal bass player. It's, I think, 13 performances. A month. I'm, I, I'm not sure, yeah. Yeah. Plus um, rehearsals and everything. But in the Vienna Philharmonic, we are a society and there are no we limits. We can, yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, uh, we sometimes have what uh, meetings and then uh, the board has to get the feeling for... Um, what how how much the orchestra should work over the years because yes. you know now there are many members with family and everything so yes. things are, are changing a little bit but uh, that's uh, the feeling of the board to get to know uh, how much is possible is it too much but well, it's what's more important also it's probably very different from person to person of like course there are some people that just want to yeah. play all the time like in every democracy yes. <laughs> you have everything and we are 148 musicians wow. so that's a complete um, picture of society and sometimes it's even that like a part of the orchestra is on on tour yes. and at the same time yes the state opera is still being yes of course so when the vienna philharmonic is on, on tour there are, of course there are also contracts with the opera how much this can be and everything so when the orchestra is on tour the other half of the orchestra has to stay at home and play in the opera every evening just every evening yeah or every evening when there's a performance yes like how, how many performances are normally in opera it's like it's quite quite uh, a lot right i don't know the exact number maybe 200 250 a year wow so it's from september until june almost every almost every day yes and wow. when i started it was amazing because it's uh, we played i think 50 55 different operas a year plus ballets 
this was also this was very interesting i started at quite a young age um, how old were you when you started um 2003 i was 20 20 yes, yes. you went into vienna i mean yeah. in state, or, state, state opera, opera. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you just take the season preview and you say okay okay oh okay, God, okay, yeah. okay 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 so i was still studying and i decided to um take some uh, semesters off <laughs> yes um just to get to know the pieces and what's also very interesting is that we are, have the repertoire system yes that, that's something yes. i wanted to talk to you about that's mm -hmm. something also a lot of people don't know in a symphony project mm -hmm. you rehearse with the conductor and then you play but in the opera there's a lot of repertoire operas yes. and those are not being rehearsed i mean otherwise you could not oops otherwise you could not have so many <laughs> operas scheduled mm -hmm. so all the standard repertoire just gets played and at the beginning okay that, that, that's you started as tutti bass and then went to principal because mm -hmm. i can't i could not imagine as principal bass as the person who's supposed to lead the bass group who's responsible when the conductor is not sure and the singers are somewhere yes. which can be the case quite often in opera mm -hmm. you're the one who gives the one and so you st <laughs> that's why perfect yes <laughs> <laughs> that's why it, why it makes so much sense to start yes. in tutti first before you go principal bass mm -hmm. in 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 an, in an orchestra like that but how even in tutti like learning all this repertoire being able to play like how many operas you say are repertoire operas or op operas that don't get rehearsed you, you, you <laughs> well that's very difficult to say now because there are, <clears throat> uh, there are also sometimes not rehearsals because of the orchestra but for singers if you have a new singer or a new production yeah. for stage so then it's, then it's i cannot say we never rehearse this opera of course not it depends on a new production new singers uh, new conductors so that's something that changes a lot but i have played until now i've been yeah in some months i will be uh, uh, playing there for 20 years wow <laughs> and it i have played more than 110 different operas it's it's really crazy i just found and out some months in, ago on top of that uh including ballets Include, okay. i think not sure <laughs> <laughs> still more than enough yeah yes <laughs> but uh it's it's just amazing in the stagione system you play maybe two operas for a long time or three and uh, here you have in a month five six seven eight different operas but that's the thing i love so much because everyone here knows how to play a tosca or how yeah. to play a valkyrie a get that down or whatever and rehearsals are very good sometimes especially for pieces that haven't been played in a long time but the orchestra i think that's biggest biggest value and asset of the orchestra is that it knows the repertoire really really well yeah. so when you come as a conductor you can really trust they know what the orchestra sh should know what it's doing and if a conductor really knows how to work with that it will be just unbelievable without a rehearsal because you know when you have been playing tosca for 20 times and then you have a rehearsal and somebody wants to change everything, do everything yeah. new and then you're thinking okay let's try let's try we are open for everything but generally as we said yes it's tradition and everything so it's quite interesting how it's done anyways <laughs> so um you just go there in the evening you play the opera with your full energy and everything and it's just amazing and on the next day you have something completely different so it never gets boring but at the beginning like when when you're yeah. playing those for the actually first mm -hmm. time and you have maybe mm -hmm. let's say in the first month of working you have five different operas to play maybe two three different symphonies that's quite challenging isn't it <laughs> yes yes it just is. like i i know for myself when when i uh, when i play principal bass mm -hmm. in different orchestras mm -hmm. you know it's not just like practicing the bass part that's that's not the yeah. difficult part it's especially when you like in opera you need to know Anticipate what all the when others are doing could, uh, singer breathe when yes. listen different to many singers different breathing everything yes yeah, exactly. listen to many recordings study the score really know yeah. what's what's happening you know yes. a, a friend of mine um he felix leisner he became the first principal bass in gewandhaus orchestra mm -hmm. when he was 19 i think okay crazy and and he now got through his two trial years and was accepted as a permanent member and they have a lot of opera also yes. so he he even he learned all like he knows all the texts of the singers he can he can he can sing it with them he he knows all yeah. the entrances of every instrument because that's what he like as a principal bass you need you need to 
know know all these yeah. things and and uh, god is and i know from a symphony you know i mostly do that if i if i mm. play in orchestras that's already a lot of work but my god for an opera yeah. and sometimes yeah. for a four hour <laughs> wagner yeah. opera that's that's quite, quite yeah i think one part is just learning the score and your part and everything that's that's the absolute basic you have to do but that's then, the basic you that's have to do basic, that's basic yes <laughs> but then what's <laughs> gonna add on top of this is just the experience that you as i said before that you already anticipate yes. you know we are you positioned react. in the opera we are positioned in the back of the orchestra on, uh, against the wall also in the musikverein yeah, that's so also quite we unique. have the the brass to our left, the winds to our right, the horns also to our right, strings. So you also have to get a feeling for when things start to drift apart. You yeah. already have to to recognize this very early. You have to know the places where this usually might happen because you can hear each other very difficult. So this is something you you cannot study at home. Yeah, you have. Yeah, and because you said it's much work. Yes, but I mean remember. Back then, when you were 20, you was, how old are you now? 26. 26, yeah. very good, not so long ago. But this was the most interesting stuff. You yes. just came in, into a new orchestra. You have so many amazing pieces. You just keep them coming. I want to learn everything. So it was not like, oh my God, this is really... It's just, oh yes, new opera. That's so exciting. Oh, that's that's, that's a great way yeah. of looking at it. Yeah. yeah. It's like me with when I learn new repertoire. Yeah. Uh, it's, it depends on the repertoire. Sometimes it's more interesting, sometimes mm -hmm. less. But if it's something I like, and you know, when it comes to the repertoire operas, Wagner, Verdi, Mozart, whatever it's, I mean, it is pretty much the best stuff yeah. there is, and you get to play it in one of the best operas in the world. I mean, I can, you, I can, you, we, as we said, you cannot say the best, but it yeah. is. Like clearly, the Vienna State Opera is one, I mean, and also the guest conductors you have, the singers yeah. you have, you, yes. you get to work with with the best yeah. people. I mean, that's what I when when I played in in LSO also. That's what I enjoyed. Like it's working with, yes. like having somebody in the front who is really like. Just maybe a short story, uh, story about this. Um, we had Frau Schatten this week, mm -hmm. last week's with Christian Thielemann. Ah, and you <laughs> have talking the, about the, the best orchestra ones in bit. The world pit is really it's full it's completely full i think it's in there are 100 or 110 guys there's even guys from the percussion outside of the orchestra pit because not everybody fits in wow and then but it's the different part uh, difficult part that of course the singers <laughs> should be heard in the yes. audience so yes. you really have to be very very um careful so christian Thielemann, he's not conducting big because he says of course then it's getting louder and louder but with 110 musicians in the pit, he's just doing movements like, like this. Wow. Like nothing. But this really forces everyone to really listen yes. because it's, what, what's he doing there? I'm not sure. You are forced to listen to the singers. Yeah. You cannot play too loud. You're forced to listen to all your colleagues to take the melodies from there. Okay, the timing here. Boop, boop, boop. So it's more or less like chamber music in a really big, <laughs> big dimension. And this is, yeah. This is very interesting. But he is kind of, in my eyes, like a master of, well, on the one hand, work opera with singers keeping the orchestra mm -hmm. down, but mm -hmm. also working with orchestras without really rehearsing. Like, that's how he got big. His first mm -hmm. big breakthroughs were, mm -hmm. like, jumping in, conducting without mm -hmm. rehearsals, and especially after feeling when, when he works with the Vienna Philharmonic or the State Opera, and not the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> He's one of the ones that, that make that work the best. And I talked to a few Mm -hmm. people from the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra about that and I had my theory and until now it was always confirmed so let's mm -hmm. see what you think about it because what you said the orchestra knows what they're doing with the standard repertoire mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. and if then somebody comes and wants to completely turn it around eh, let's see if that works because I mean there's a reason why they do what they do yes. even if it might be different from the personal vision of a conductor and what he, what Thielemann, in my my estimation, does so well is he knows when to let them do what they do, to give them the space to, even if it might differ from the stuff he would otherwise do, and only go in and, and change exactly. something there where it maybe is not already, yes, you know, yes. It's so just really clear. live conducting, reacting to what's happening. And for example, if some um, player has a solo, um, he would never conduct the solo. He's yeah. just... Uh, organizing everything around that, that this one person can just 
raise it above everyone else and and uh, it's like a yeah big uh, flower going up and he's yeah. just making everything that this flower can grow yeah, but that is so fascinating yes. it must be it's a bit like playing on different instruments also often when i do tours uh, i i don't travel with my own bass because i mean depends on if i if i play a recital or solo concert okay but if i play a trout or even like trio programs of oh, i'm just yes. i don't want to and then i get a bass for like a day or two or sometimes i get it 20 minutes before the concert and if i now try to force it to do exactly what i want how i'm used to having it on my bass it cannot work mm -hmm. i need to feel how does this instrument react what are the colors it does well what are the ones that it doesn't and then yes. in, in, in the end the orchestra is the instrument of yeah. the well it's it's <laughs> hard to say but it kind of is like the instrument of, of a conductor of course with a much yeah. much bigger mind yeah. of its own yeah. but that's what i like so much about playing the double bass we are not or ah, I, i wanted to say this <laughs> okay okay no, no. so um <laughs> I'm sometimes a li I'm a little bit sad because uh, uh, in social media and everything, yeah. double bass is nowadays very much recognized for the solo playing, which is very good. Which because, I really like. Yes, I <laughs> which is amazing because there has been an amazing development over yeah. the last decades. So it's amazing. But playing double bass in an orchestra seems to be so okay. It's it's also interesting sometimes. I think well, at least what, what I'm seeing. So. I want Although just to I, say, I will say something about that. Later, okay, you go on for now. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the, the 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 qualities and the all the characteristics you need in the orchestra as a double bass player is something really really amazing because and it's completely different. Yes, also. Completely like the different. bass as a bass instrument is yes, a different. It's story. the foundation. Yeah. Like I always say, it's the foundation of the house. It has to be yes. perfect for intonation, for timing, for sound bass, for everything. And for phrasing, you are not also. in the first row. You are not the one who is always seen and heard. Uh, obviously, yeah. but you are keeping everything together. In the yeah. Musikverein, we're sitting in the back and it's nice like a triangle. The, the timpani, concert master, double bass is here, can really put your arms around the orchestra and yeah, have everything within your hug. <laughs> I mean, I have the feeling, especially when it comes to phrasing, to showing direction, like understanding the harmonies, mm -hmm. where is it going, mm -hmm. and timing. Yes. You know, that, that's what I love when I do something like Schubert Octet or Trout mm -hmm. or, when, or even when I play sometimes in the orchestra. What people don't know, and it's often they don't really recognize it, but especially in timing and showing the direction of the music, you can do so much without yes. them even yes. noticing. Yes. Like it's, it's, it's incredible. Yes. And that is so much fun. These are sometimes the most um, nerve-wracking moments because... Also in Vienna, there's one more speciality. Uh, the conductor is doing like this and nothing happens for <laughs> maybe half a second. Yeah. So <laughs> we are playing very late, yeah. which is very difficult for a conductor sometimes. Yes. Because it has some sort of reaction time. Like, yes. And when bah. somebody, yes, cannot handle this, sometimes <laughs> I will not uh, say who it was. It was just uh, Tristan. And in the end, somebody was conducting. It was getting, we were behind as always and he was already conducting the first beat of the next bar and we were still at the three of the last bar oh. and we had to play the pizzicati oh. or for example uh, yeah. very often in the end uh, when you have a pizzicato and there is before the last bar this da da dee dee bam yeah and you conduct this da 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 dee and then as a bass player you have to be the yes. one who starts the whole thing going now and then it's the pizza it's like is it will be early will every be, everyone come along with you so usually when you are a little bit in the front it's like boom. <laughs> when you're too much in the front it's like boom. <laughs> when you're late it's boom. so you really want this yes and this is very exciting if it works i mean it's the nicest thing yes it's like like an arpeggio like a chord on one instrument it starts with the low note and then it it, it goes up yes so I just got the sign from our director that we have five more minutes. Ah, okay. Anything okay, okay. I can ask you? Oof. No, 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 no. I, I, this is I, I, this is mostly about uh, us talking about Vienna and Viennese tradition. <laughs> I think that yeah. is so fascinating to me. And also, that's something, because it's such a mystery. I mean, I, I grew up in it. And to me, also, we talked about sound. But also, it's a lot about, I have the feeling, in, in orchestra, but also in solo playing and chamber music about phrasing and showing direction and something that I really 
particularly liked about my musical education in Vienna was every note needs to go somewhere or go away from somewhere. Yes. Like Brahms said. Even not every note, but every, as Riccardo Muti always says, even if there's a break, music has gone da 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 Yes. M music has the best moments are always in the silence, not yeah. in the music. <laughs> but that, that is so true. It's like when I, I just two days ago mm -hmm. played um, a solo piece for Swara Bat, Iberique Peninsular. Ah, yes. And these moments when you like <laughs> let it, you let it sound <laughs> and then it's really quiet for a second yes. and then you continue with the next thing and some audiences can handle it some some don't <laughs> and it's also obviously yes. the, the responsibility with your you know uh, like uh, with how you look with how you present yourself on stage yes. to keep them really interested so that nothing worse than you're making a really good ending and then it's just <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> You can but, destroy a whole 70 minute symphony. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But but that's something I have the feeling in Vienna it works much better than in a lot of other places. Like for example, a few years back I played Strauss Metamorphosis, Metamorphosen, oh God in English. It's more difficult to pronounce. Um and it ends like with these yes. incredibly sad C minor and then we actually we did a Musikverein and we had 20 seconds of silence. Really? Like wow. We were just sitting there, like we were keeping the tension. Not like just, you know, <laughs> we're keeping it. And, we were, and it, we were, it was yeah, only with friends and we could we perfect. could do this. And and then after like, uh, maybe it felt like even longer to me. It was probably like, it pro probably was like 15, 20 seconds, something like that. But that's, this was... But that's very long. Yes, yes. yes. But, the, the, but no coughing, nothing. There was no noise from the whole audience. And there was... Insane. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, yes. Very good. At the end, yes. I, what, what would be great is, is maybe you, you told me so many fun anecdotes from your time <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and in the state opera, two different things. Let's yes, remember. Of <laughs> maybe yeah. you can share share some of those with the, the, the I, listeners. I think I told you one story about the trumpet player. It was my first New Year's concert. Um, which of course is quite exciting because all the media and cameras and everything and you yeah, know it's like millions of views yeah. what, I don't know so uh, five minutes before the concert I still went to the restroom and to get ready and be <laughs> prepared for everything and I entered the restroom and suddenly I saw a trumpet player with his trumpet in the restroom I thought, ah interesting and he just turned on the water washing his trumpet <laughs> then taking some paper towels <laughs> polishing it <laughs> blowing the water out and said, oh, now it looks nice. <laughs> it was just, he was a very experienced <laughs> principal trumpet player for many years and he was just so relaxed. Yeah, oh, now it lo also looks fine. And he went up there and played the New Year's concert. <laughs> and maybe fun. to say that's not the normal <laughs> thing to do, to wash yeah. a trumpet. Yeah. I mean, no, uh, the, the brass players, they have to wash the instruments, I think, at least in the inside sometimes, yeah. but probably not five minutes before the biggest classical event <laughs> on this planet. Yeah, that's it's like very impressive. Yes, the the New Year's concert and the Summer Nights concert. Those are like the the gigantic events, right? Like uh, the, the uh, hundreds yes. of countries, like yes. not hundreds and not hundreds, of, like but a hundred countries uh, in the world. I, I think, think are so. watching this. It's uh. it's insane. Like I watched it always as a kid. <laughs> Very good. And something maybe we can also say: we actually long before I started really playing bass stood on well not on a stage we, we made music together already before because back in the day i was in the vienna boys choir yeah and yes i sang in the state opera a few times in the in the magic food from mozart but also another part of the of the vienna philharmonic which probably comes back to the hof oper yes is you play in the hof music capelle yeah, which dates back over 500 years so over 500 yes, years 14 90 something every yes. sunday There's this, like, I, I loved it as a Every kid. Sunday yeah. night in the morning, lots of uh, sleepy <laughs> <laughs> Viennese, how do you say, uh, choir, bo uh, choir Vien boys. Vienna boys choir. Vienna boys, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we we always as kids, I mean, although it was great music, you know, yeah. uh, it's it's, the, it's a great repertoire. The well. choir from the Vienna State Opera plus the Vienna Boys Choir plus yes. Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra play at Sunday at nine yes. in the Viennese Hofmusikkapelle. Yes. Some, yes. some... But you changed... 
since then. <laughs> I changed a bit, yeah. A bit for maybe 70 centimeters. And <laughs> no, but that, that is also, to me, that was always fascinating to see. Like I was, mm -hmm. back then I was playing the bass already, but I wasn't thinking about doing professionally, but I yes. saw the bassist always and heard him and also I was like, yeah, maybe, you know, that, that, is, that is quite, and quite now nice. now you're here hosting me. That's <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, it was a big pleasure. Thank well, you very much for the thank invitation. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I hope it was interesting for everyone. I th I, for me, it was if not, definitely. give him a call. I come back and tell more interesting things. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can do another. One. Like for me, this was fascinating. I, I mean, I am from Vienna. I know <clears> a lot about Viennese tradition, Vienna Philharmonic, and all the stuff that's going on. But even, even so, I learned so many new things and was really Thank you fascinating. Very much. Same for me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>